Growing up in West Cork, in the countryside, I was always surrounded by plants and stone. I think that's really stuck with me over the years. Even as a young lad doing gardening work, I found great value in pulling stones out of the ground to ready the soil for plants, and then using the same stone to build walls to protect the garden. When I finished my studies in fine art and sculpture, I found myself returning to landscaping work, building gardens that incorporated stonework. But I soon found myself hungry to learn more and a desire to connect with like-minded people passionate about stone. Social media has made the world a much more connected place, but back then it was much harder to connect with people. I was finding it very hard to find any training in Ireland that, where I could develop my skills, or even somewhere I could connect with people within the trades. I did make some connections internationally with the Stone Foundation in North America, which was great. They were doing some really interesting stuff. I was also reading John Shaw Remington's blog, seeing all the amazing dry stone stuff they were doing in America and in Canada. And I could not believe we didn't have anything like this in Ireland. And then, one day, I got chatting to a young Irish-Ukrainian man named Alex, and he told me about this amazing stone festival on Inishir. It's almost 10 years now though, since I first traveled to Inishir for the festival. I still remember it well. Not only was it my first time at Phelan Aglock, it was also my first time traveling out to the Aran Islands. There is a very special energy about this place. Perhaps it is radiating from the pure limestone that makes up every inch of this island. Or perhaps that energy comes from the walls themselves. Whatever it was, it was a feeling I experienced when I first arrived on the island. And one I feel every time I return. The festival itself turned out to be a great experience and I quickly made many great friends and contacts and leaving the island I felt energized and even more passionate about stone. It was this energy and renewed passion I experienced on the island that spurred me on to volunteer with the Dry Stone Wall Association of Ireland. The association was set up just a few years prior by a group of people who were inspired and motivated by the Fail in the Block Festival to form a group that could further the craft of dry stone walling and hopefully bring some of that positive energy and passion we all experienced on Inishir to other parts of the country. Building the Gathering of Stones Dry Stone Monument was one of the association's events that really achieved in bringing this passion for the craft from Inishir to the mainland. Over the course of three summers, volunteers from across Ireland and abroad built a large dry stone monument using stone gathered from across Ireland. Over these three summers, the stone community grew larger and many more friendships and connections were made. When I returned the next year to Inishir for Fail in a Glock, one of the speakers there was Alexandria Morosco from Seattle. She spoke about her work, but also about a wonderful stone festival she is involved in back in Seattle called Stonefest. This festival included many facets of stone trades, but also the artistic side of stone, which really greatly appealed to me. During her talk, she also informed us of the scholarship programme they had to assist stone workers from Ireland to travel to the festival to further their skills. And after failing a block, I filled in a scholarship application form. The next spring, I travelled to Seattle, along with two other scholarship awardees from Ireland. Attending Stonefest was a real eye-opener for me, and led to a turning point in my own career. Not only did it lead to many more great connections and opportunities overseas, it also made it more apparent to me that I should embrace my creativity and become more ambitious in my projects I take on. One of the ways I was able to achieve this was by taking on 
20% for our public tenders for schools. Many of these projects allowed me to be creative in my work, but also incorporate nature and traditional stonework into the mix. Working with stone can be a solemn job. However, with taking on some of these bigger jobs, I was delighted to be able to tap into that great pool of craftspeople I have come to know from the many trips to Inishir. In more recent times, I seem to be doing a lot more stone mosaic work, partially because I want to try and spend more time in my studio, but also because I seem to have fallen into somewhat of a niche market with my pebble mosaics. There isn't a huge market for pebble mosaics in Ireland, but that also means there's not many craftspeople doing this kind of work. And this is not just the case here in Ireland. It has also taken me abroad because they just simply cannot find the craftspeople to take on this kind of work. This is why it's so important that we continue to pass on these traditional skills and to make them accessible to the people who are interested in learning them. For my part, I have started teaching some workshops in mosaic work. I've been running a few here in Ireland, but also in Austria for Helmut Schneider as part of his Stein and Wine Festival. Helmut too is a regular attendee of the Fair and the Glock Festival on Inish year, and first came to Ireland to take part in the Gathering of Stones back in 2013. It was his experiences at the Gathering of Stones and at Fair and the Glock that motivated him to set up his Stein and Wine event in Austria. The event is held at a horticultural college there and I find it is a great event to be involved in because it really brings the beauty of stonework and gardening together, which is something I'm always trying to bring together in my own work. Personally, I have found so much value in attending these stone events, both here at home and abroad. I have gained so much knowledge from working alongside many of the great craftspeople along the way. I guess this is why dry stone walling is recognised as part of our intangible cultural heritage. You can only learn so much from books. To really understand the crafts, we need to experience them and to work alongside those who live it every day.